Jesus, open our hearts and our minds to see how you be the people in this room and how you be us. Thank you for compassion, for grace, and for mercy. And help us to be able to share in that and to share that with others. This we ask in your name. Amen. As I told you that uh, my wife and I are new to the Williamsburg Town area, and we've been here two months and actually we seem to love it. We're learning more and more about our new community each day. Um, we lived the majority of our married life in Washington, D.C. area. The Washington, D.C. area has its own unique features. Traffic for one, and we're very, very good at it. Washington is the seat, the national seat of our government, the, to state the obvious, of course. It's very political. We've been asked by people to run in it, and we are the one who choose. There are also important government officials or some celebrities all around Washington all the time. You never know who you're going to run into. Some local people would seek them out. Attend parades, and I've been to a couple of law posts myself. Concerts, sort of events that would feature these important people. Some are autograph seekers. They want the celebrity to sign the name for them, and so they will have them in the center of the room. I never was an autograph seeker, but I am into you this morning, and I'm guilty of celebrity seeking. Only once in the whole time I was at DC. This particular celebrity enjoyed their national notoriety. The person was in the news a good deal at the time. It's hard to understand, at least I thought, uh, how anyone, even the Washington press, could be so critical of this person. I had to see for myself if she was genuine, possessed of grace, so I went to see her for myself. I wanted to see her. Well, she was genuine and worthy of a lot of love and support. I mean, really, was she for real? So there I was on October 16, 1986, on the evening streets of Washington, D.C., along her anticipated murder. Now everything had to be to set the scene. Everything was normal. The time traffic was slow, and just a small amount of celebrities were on the streets. And then all of a sudden, all the traffic disappeared. The whole city block went block quiet, and in a flash, the sirens blew and the road to the city block. And I saw it for a split second in the park, about two feet away from me. And a couple of yards away from that, she got out of the car and walked into. The National History Museum. And it's out there that I saw Jesus die for you. Her grace and charm were captivating, even to an innocent, just innocent, kind of bystander. With just one look, I began to believe this was an important moment for me because of our family. Just really focusing. Today's gospel lesson, we have this great miracle story of Jesus feeding 5,000 with uh, on five loaves and two fish. I mean, how cool is that? And if you're like me, you grew up being impressed with this great miracle of Jesus. And honestly, as I thought over it, I, I had this question that comes from my vivid imagination. I mean, why did Jesus do this miracle? I mean, I know it's my 21st century worldview. But Jesus could have done something more spectacular or more amazing, like bring a moon down to his finger, or um, maybe uh, stop the world from spinning so everybody could float around for a couple seconds. That would be really cool. It would have been really convincing statements, wouldn't it? But Jesus doesn't do anything like that. So maybe there's something else that's going on. Maybe 
beginning of the whole story is not about the miracle, but the purpose of the miracle, or why Jesus chose this time and this place to act against nature and to act with God. Now, many times when we read scripture, there is something that we just kind of skip over as an incidental act. And I think today, especially as we come from Matthew, there's a good example of that. The story of John and the Baptist that precedes this story. Remember, John had quite a problem, and he said that he is the prophet that ushered in the Messiah who will come immediately upon the end. And these people, they were believing John's death. Jesus went all by himself to believe John's death. The people heard that Jesus was going to come, and they went out to see him. They went out because of John's prophecy. They were celebrity seekers and needed to see for themselves if Jesus was the one, if he was for real. Is he the Messiah? So Jesus does some yoga teaching, not paying attention to time, they realize that they were over. Each today and being stranded too far from them to get something to do. And Jesus has compassion on them. He also wants to be seen by them for who he was. So he does this miracle of compassion and sparks a new relationship, a new covenant with his people. Third, but you know, again, I mean, he doesn't just zap the bank in front of them, he includes participation of the people. And he uses what they have to the glory of God. I think the story is not just about God's miracle power and God's Jesus. I think it is God showing the people who he is and his message of compassion and grace to all of them. I think it answers the question is Jesus for real? And I think this was an important night for these folks that they saw. Heard his teaching, they saw his compassion, and they experienced his love and power for them. Our modern day skepticism makes it hard for us to read this story and get anything near the goosebumps that we just went with that. But when we do unpack this story, there is something in it for us. It's the authenticity of Jesus as a loving and graceful God that has compassion on his people. I often say that we don't know why the rules of life are the way they are. We can't live, why can't we live for 2,200 years? Or why do we suffer or not? Why is there so much bad on the good? There are so many questions that Jesus doesn't answer for us this morning. But the one question he does answer is that he cares for us all. And he will take care of us in our good times and in our bad, in our grieving and in our suffering. Jesus shows that he cares for all of us. And he also shows us that we can participate in his goodness. We can be part of the grace by what we do, by what we do, and also by what we show. So today maybe we don't need to get lost in the term. To find comfort with what is revealed to us, God cares and God loves us. In Christ Jesus, He tells us that of all. And like these hungry people outside the edge of town in the late evening, who wanted to see the celebrity, we get to see the real Jesus too. And we're able to see what we come to see for ourselves. And it isn't just those and God's love shining 